Hello, welcome to the Special Report, your news and views program got geek gaming culture on the internet. Come up in the show today, Nintendo takes down a video from a speedrunner under the guise of anti-piracy. There's a lot to cover about how this could affect people down the road. My name is JD Shadow and the Special Report is starting right now. As many of you are aware, Nintendo has been the most draconian about content ID matches and copyright infringement on YouTube, or at least what it thinks is as such. However, this particular story is not only targeting those who put up just Let's Plays or trailers of their footage. Apparently, there are also targeting speedrunners in ROM hacking videos. The person that was targeted was by the name of Pangea Punga, the creator of the popular item level which was billed as the hardest Super Mario World level ever. It had gotten to a million plus views on YouTube. He is also known as a tool assisted speedrunner, which basically means that he uses emulation and ROMs in order to use different types of tools that a regular Nintendo system would not have in order to do things that would not normally be able to be performed through that particular game or cartridge or disc or whatever. In many cases, those types of things cannot be attained through any other means and some of those include what goes on in particular frames in order to give a better interpretation of what you would have to do in order to attain a particular glitch or how a particular mechanic actually works. Apparently Nintendo does not like him putting up these videos. He sent out a tweet today saying quote well YouTube just wrecked my channel RIP me. The reason for this tweet is the email that Nintendo sent him saying quote, we wish to inform you that the video is in question infringed Nintendo's copyrights. As the owner of the copyright in the games Mario Kart 8, Super Mario World, and Pokemon, Nintendo has the exclusive right to perform the games publicly or to make derivative works based on the games. By making a derivative work using Nintendo's IP and then displaying Nintendo's IP on your YouTube channel, you have violated Nintendo's exclusive rights. Nintendo understands that its fans are the reasons for its success and we are always happy to see people share the passion for Nintendo's games. At the same time, Nintendo's intellectual property constitutes its most valuable assets and the unauthorized use of these assets jeopardizes Nintendo's rights. Because of this, we ask that you please remove the video in question from your channel and confirm that you will not post any videos using unauthorized software or copies of games, distribute or continue work on the modification, or take any other steps that would infringe Nintendo's rights. Nintendo Nintendo encourages fan engagement on YouTube through the Nintendo Creators Program. Under the program, participants are granted a license to use Nintendo's characters, games, or an other electoral property subject to the code of conduct included with the agreement. However, please note that this code of conduct prohibits you, among other things, from posting any content using unauthorized software or copies of games. This includes videos featuring tool-assisted speedruns, which require making a copy of a game's ROM file and running the copied ROM through an emulator. If you are interested in learning more about the Nintendo Creator programs, please see r.ncp.nintendo.net. Thank you for your understanding. Sincerely, Nintendo Anti-Piracy Team. And it is because of this that, according to Destructoid, upwards of 80% of Pandaya Panga's videos were removed by Nintendo. Now, before I go any further in this special report, please be advised that I do subscribe to Kung Fu Fruit Cup's channel on Twitch. She is a Twitch stream runner, and she does stream Nintendo games, Kirby 64, and Splatoon, although she does not do tool assisted speedruns. This is a financial subscription that I do once per month. So although this is not affecting what I feel about this particular story, please keep that in mind in case you are concerned about possible bias in this particular story on my end. Let's first throw away for a second the fact that this was a tool assisted speedrunner. He was using ROMs and emulation, which in of itself is is a lot of gray area that we'll get to in just a second because this is not the first time Nintendo has quote unquote cracked down on just about anything on YouTube. They have been severely draconian. This is not the only group of people that they have been targeting. They have been targeting just about every single person who has ever posted something on YouTube about their game. If you do not remember my issues with the special report in which I talked about Iwata's passing, I used the trailer for Super Smash Brothers in which Reggie Ames and Iwata were 
fighting amongst themselves in some sort of Dragon Ball Z-esque scene. Guess what? They claimed the video. Nintendo, for 22 or so minutes of my work, they claimed it for what was two or three minutes worth of using that particular trailer. And it wasn't even the full trailer. I had actually broke off the trailer at a certain point in order to show a quote from Iwata. And they still were able to say, hey, because he used it that one particular piece of the trailer, we have to write through the entire 22 minutes of his video. Now, keep in mind is that as I am a smaller channel, I don't get as many views as a Total Biscuit or Jim Sterling would have. But for a two minute piece of a trailer that describes the person in question, the person that we are talking about, they are going to claim the video because of that. And they did not respond very quickly to my dispute about it. They waited a couple weeks and then they decided they were going to reinstate it. They did that douchebaggery thing. They nearly waited the entire 30 days before they reinstated the claim. So Nintendo can't just say that they were just targeting him because he was a tool assistant speedrunner. They cannot say that because they have targeted other people who have used legal copies of Nintendo products, of Nintendo games before. Nintendo does not make PC games as far as I'm aware. They only create console games and many people do use capture cards and they're using legal copies that they bought through GameStop, through Amazon, through whatever for their content, for their Let's Plays on YouTube and they're going to crack down on the speedrunners now. But remember, in many of these cases, these are just third-party monetization claims. The videos are still up, but Nintendo is making money as opposed to the YouTuber that had made it. In this case, in Panda's case, this is a standard copyright strike. The video is not available for YouTube. You are getting penalized. Three of those and your channel will go away. They will delete your channel, provided you do not have any counter notifications up there. And the only way that they can actually keep the video off of YouTube once you have filed a counter notification is if the person who had made a claim has gone on to actively sue you in a court of law. And many major companies will not go past that step once you file a counter notification since it opens up the floodgates for a ton of things to go down. But I would not put it past Nintendo to take that extreme step. And just one strike can cripple your channel. You cannot upload a video any longer than 15 minutes. You can't use the fan funding. There's a ton of things that you cannot do with just one strike, let alone three or in some cases channel is pretty much deleted. And forget about Nintendo issuing a retraction since we know how Tronconian they have been to the third party monetization claims. This is a little bit different from Nintendo as opposed to what has happened in the past, so I don't see them letting up on this particular aspect of it anytime soon. What's next? What is next for Nintendo that they are going to try to be draconian about? Are they going to move to Twitch? Because if they move to Twitch, there's a lot of speedrunners there who use Nintendo products, Nintendo games. And we have seen that Nintendo isn't going to stop there. We have seen that Nintendo isn't limiting their targets to just those that use quote-unquote illegal ROMs and illegal hacks and illegal emulators. Emulators. Who is to trust Nintendo that they are not going to target Twitch or other YouTubers who do speedruns of these types of games and don't use tool assists, who don't use ROMs, who use the legitimate copies of those games? Who is to say that they are not going to do that? And who is there to stop them from doing that? Because when we look at the derivative works and what that means, one of the main things that keeps coming up is transformative work. Derivative work, if you differentiate that kind of work to a point, to where it can become your own work that can be protected under fair use laws. And games can be a derivative work. It can become a transformative work because no two people play a game the exact same way. The laws, as Total Biscuit said in the content patch recently, have not caught up to this sort of interactivity. Sure, the characters might be the tenders. Sure, the stages and the coding might be theirs, but the play style, the way you play, what happens when you play a game is all your work. You are putting in the work to play that game and you are putting in the work to edit the video, make sure everything's right as far as sound levels are concerned and as quality of the video is concerned and to upload it to YouTube. And I can say this from personal experience. It takes a hell of a lot of time in order to edit the videos, in order to get them posted on YouTube and to keep that going. It takes a lot of your free time. It takes a tremendous amount of free time. And it does pay me to see people on the internet say, oh, well, they're just making stuff off YouTube. They're not really doing real work. Try it. 
try to do this. Try to make a video. Try to edit it to where people are going to want to watch it. Please try it. I can assure you that it's not all that easy. And they're not just doing it for the money or whatever. They love doing this. They like doing what they do. They like to entertain people on Twitch, on YouTube, whatever. And so far, the only company that has ever had this much of a problem with YouTube videos is Nintendo. I have not seen even Sega pull stuff like this. I have not seen any game company, period. Never. In gaming, never. I can assure you, Nintendo is the absolute only game company, only major AAA game company that has tried to pull this and has gotten away with it. That's the worst thing about it. They have gotten away with it. We can talk about the several amounts of reviewers or Let's Players who have been affected unfairly by the YouTube copyright system that have abused the DMCA takedown system in order to censor opinions. Angry Joe, Total Biscuit, the list can go on and on. I'm listing just two of the major ones. But at least those ones were not only called out, but they were indie developers. Ones that already had a sort of questionable background to them. And I can name a few others, but I'm not going to list them because they will we'll be here forever if I go ahead and list them now. But the only thing, the only difference between Nintendo, well, two differences, the only two differences between what happened with Total Biscuit and Angu Joe and what's happening now with Nintendo and all of these people who are being targeted is that one, this is a triple A company that should probably know better. And two, they are allowed to get away with it because hell, they are Nintendo. They are the biggest game company out there. They are one of the biggest game companies. They know exactly how to pull the strings. They know exactly how to play to the media to say, hey, we are doing the right thing. We are cracking down on anti-piracy. We are cracking down on this. No, you're not. This is a deliberate attempt to get a piece of the pie out of something in which you know nothing about because you have not done the research or you think that this is going to take away from your ability to earn a profit. It is going to do the exact opposite if you just leave it the hell alone. But instead, you are deciding to go in there and try to do your own thing and trying to get that piece of pie and people are not going to want to play your games on your platform because they are not allowed to earn a living. And yes, people do earn livings off of YouTube. People earn livings off of Twitch playing these games. It is a job and game companies do appreciate when people do that. They do appreciate it because that is known as free advertising to them. When somebody watches a particular YouTuber that they like have fun playing a certain game, they might want to try the game out too. That's what happened with me and watching Orapichi play Guild Wars 2. I wanted to try the game out. I decided to try the game out and I was pleased by it. Same thing with Comfort Fruit Cup and Splatoon. I saw her play Splatoon. I decided to get a Wii U and try Splatoon out. I'm having a lot of fun with that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. There's been a ton of different games that I've seen people play and I thought, you know what? That might be a game I want to try. And they see increased sales from this. They see increased and if these YouTubers cannot be able to further their living in order to continue to do this kind of stuff, they just won't do it. And Nintendo is doing everything they can to say, oh, well, we're going to do this complicated thing where we take most of the rest of the revenue after Mako Studios, after Google AdSense gets their piece of the pie, we're going to go ahead and take 20% off of your remaining 40%. So you only get 20% of what you would normally earn, right? Is that the way you want to tell people who might want to promote your product through some free advertising that that's the way to go? Is taking away from the whole fact of tool assistance speed runs or whatever else you want to add to this, which as I said, is complete BS because it's obvious you're not limiting this to just tool assistance speed runners or ROM advertisers or whoever else you want to call them. Is that how you want to treat these people who might be driving sales to your products? I've just proven at least one person was directly affected by watching someone else play a game that you have created to push them over the fence to actually buy the system that you created. And I said this might not be only directed at YouTube now. What if after you decide this, you can target speedrunners, you see that Twitch has a good variety of people who speedrun and they mainly speedrun your games. 
What is going to happen to them? What are you going to try to do to them? Are you going to try to do the same thing that you did with YouTube or what you're doing now to Twitch? Provided you're not already trying out those waters. Provided you're not already trying to figure out how to get that piece of the pie. And many of those partners, which Kung Fu Fruit Cup and Cloak Yoshi and Fire Dragon are partnered with Twitch, are not exactly keen on talking about ROMs and emulation and stuff like that. I know Fufu does not like to talk about ROMs and emulation in her Twitch chat because she feels that they need to keep it as legal as humanly possible. And I don't necessarily blame her for that because that is such a gray area and it has such unclear laws in its own right because they talk a lot about, Nintendo talks a lot about anti-piracy and when you talk about ROMs, when you talk about emulation, you can't just call that piracy. You need to call that what it is, which is copyright infringement, which is a lot murkier of waters to go down, which is probably why they keep saying piracy, 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 because that is an easier way to say, hey, they're stealing from us. They might not be stealing from you per se. What is that particular game that they were creating available anywhere else? What is that game able to be bought in a reasonable way at a store or somewhere in which you could just walk up to a store clerk say I want to buy this game. If it was not then you might not have that much of a case there and you may be saying okay well these are available on the virtual console but not every single game that was created for a system is on that service. And when you look at this kind of stuff at the end of the day most people are not going to do the quote quote illegal thing because they want to steal or they're feeling like a pirate that day or whatever. They're doing it because they can't get it anywhere else or it's easier to do it through digital means and they have no other way of obtaining that piece of software. It was the same way with Napster. When Napster first came out, many people would think, oh, well, they're stealing, they're downloading these things in order to steal. No, they found it to be an easier way to obtain the music that they were wanting to get. And because they couldn't get it any other way in that form, they went to the illegal area in order to get it. Now, was that piracy? Again, the person who was giving that to you was not losing their copy of that particular song. It was called peer-to-peer. -peer. It was copying the file from one person computer to another one. That would be copyright infringement and that's a little bit of a harder case to try to prove that there was some sort of crime committed there. Because again, you have to talk about availability elsewhere. You have to talk about whether or not it was available in that format elsewhere. Could you legally buy it elsewhere? But then you talk about when iTunes came out. How popular has iTunes been? It came out around 2002, 2005. I forget the exact year. And look what has happened. People started to look to iTunes and now we are downloading actual albums off of that. We are buying albums off of iTunes. So we can actually prove that they didn't want to exactly pirate or whatever but they had no other choice in that form. And some people are still not warming up to the idea of downloading songs digitally or getting a digital copy of a movie or a game. People are still not to that digital age yet and that pain me and because they can manipulate what these laws actually mean and because they can say that because the laws haven't really caught up to this form of media they can exploit that in order to get a piece of the pie in which they otherwise have no right of getting in this case is tool assisted speedrunners who's to say that they're not going to stop there with the speedrunners we know of the organization speed demos archive and the semi-annual event games done quick the summer games done quick and the awesome games done quick they raise money for charity they raise money for doctors without borders which was the charity for summer games done quick in 2015 a few months ago and of course awesome games done quick to prevent cancer in order to find a cure for cancer that is unbelievably good for them to do but if nintendo is going to have their way with this if they decide that they want to go after speedrunners like that who use legitimate copies actual cartridges is actual discs of games including those made by Nintendo or on Nintendo platforms what is really going to happen to that community if Nintendo decides they want to dig their teeth into that community because God forbid we make videos of their products that is a dangerous proposition and it could actually happen don't think for a minute that we might be overstretching the boundaries here this is becoming more and more like it could actually occur that Nintendo could be so draconian they could target twitch streamers and they might already 
already be doing that. But to target this community, a community that does so much good work and does so much for not only the gaming community, but to help charities get the money they need in order to continue their hard work. Is that how we're going to pull it? Either Nintendo needs to see the daylight out of this whole scenario and what they're doing to it, or they need to stop being so greedy and taking advantage of outdated laws and unclear laws in order to date their heels into something like this. This is deplorable. And even if you think that ROMs and emulation are illegal, even if you think in that sort of way, or if you think they should be illegal, the fact that Nintendo is even doing this at all should really scare you. It should terrify you because this letter was very deceiving in saying that they were only going after those people who do stuff illegally, who would use ROMs and emulation for their videos, which for some people, that's the only way they can make a video of Nintendo games. Because while video capture cards are not terribly expensive, they're not exactly the cheapest thing in the world either. But if they're actually going to try to imply that they are only targeting those speedrunners or only targeting those tool-assisted ROM emulating speedrunners or whatever, they are lying through their teeth. They have done this in the past. They have targeted people who have done games with their own copy of the software and their own hardware and they have proven that they are not limiting this in any stretch of the imagination and until they get called out on it until somebody actually says something and thank god Jim Sterling and Total Biscuit actually tweeted to this about this sort of thing then this is going to be allowed to continue and by saying oh they're not doing any hard work or they deserve it you are enabling this type of behavior and what will happen if they go too far. Nintendo please take from Arena Net on this sort of issue. As a matter of fact take from anybody else because you are the only people that douchebaggery to pull off something this draconian. And shame on YouTube to play the guilty until proven innocent and not put the burden of proof on the claimant. That is something that should be standard. That is something that should be logical. But yet YouTube fails to do this. And instead they just when a counterclaim has been issued saying hey do you own this? Do you own this thing that they're saying you don't? Instead of looking through the video themselves and determining whether or not it actually infringes up any of their copyrights which nine times out of ten it does not and this would be a lot simpler if you put the burden of proof on the claimant if you tell them hey in order to file a dispute file a claim you have to prove to us that you own that piece of footage and that they are not using it for review purposes or is in a transformative or derivative work which Nintendo is wrong on that too derivative work can be protected under fair use law if they do the right thing which this could actually have been this could actually have been a derivative work which can be protected under United States law as fair use something that Japan does not have as I said a dozen times and something that maybe Japan needs to work upon maybe all of this stuff might get Japan to say hey wait a minute maybe we can use something like a fair use doctrine maybe they need to get with the times here please please do something about this because it is going to get worse before it gets better until something is done about it and that's going to do it for this edition of the special report thanks again for watching my name is jd shadow and that just happened